Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, we check out a dummy fork from Park Tool. There's also the 13 speed gravel group set from Campionolo. We check out a couple of cool bikes from Intent, both from the 2021 range. And also, there's a brand new version of that new proof reactor. Again, another 2021 model. Where is this year gone? Okay, so straight into news, and first up, there's a 13 speed group set on the market. Yeah, okay, it's not the Rotor one. We have reported on the Rotor 13 speed hydraulic group set before, but this one is from one of the big three. The big three being Campionolo, Shimano, and of course, SRAM. Now Shimano and SRAM are up to 12 speed, as we know full and well. But Campionolo really, they're well known in the road scene. They're not really known in the mountain bike scene. They have dabbled in the past, I think in around 89 or maybe 1990. They had some really good looking stuff, but it wasn't quite up there with what was currently available. Anyhow, they are incredible in the road world, and I think they've had about 40 wins of the Tour de France under their group sets over the years. So the fact that they've chosen to go with an off-road transmission out means we should be paying attention to it because there's some cool technology going on. So this is it, you can see on screen. It's got a 13 speed block on the back. Now the one you're looking at here, I think it's a 942, but it's also available in a 936 and a 1044. So it's not got quite the range that you're seeing on those 12 speed group sets from Shimano and SRAM. However, it's a really neat design. It's got a couple of really cool things about it. One of them is the fact the way it installs onto the bike using what looks like a pretty regular splined cassette body, except for the fact it's much shorter, enabling the 10 and the tiny nine tooth to hang off the end. So that's a very neat design. And it doesn't use up any more space than a 12 speed. Now this is because the chain, which they call the C13, is actually slightly narrow, and it's all slightly narrower than their 12 speed stuff. So you're talking about 4.9 millimeter chain over a 5.1. So only fractionally, but it's just enough to creep it all inboard enough that you're going to get the same chain line and it's going to work really well. Uh, as you can see here, this is a video made by our friends over at GCN. Uh, I urge you to check out the video, even if you're not in, in the market for 13s, because it's really quite cool uh, to have such a high-end prestigious brand like Campionola making something like this for off-road. I think like, you know, people should be sitting up and looking at this stuff. Uh, I think it's really cool. So there's some more shots of it on screen at the moment. Uh, it's got a clutch rear derailleur on there, as you might imagine, and a narrow wide style chainring profile to it. But the rear derailleur has a really cool feature to it. So on the SRAM one, uh, it has a locking clutch design. On the Shimano one, you can turn the clutch, the clutch on and off. But on the Campionola one, they've got something quite cool with this. So you actually pull back the entire derailleur and it locks. So a similar kind of concept to what SRAM are offering with their cage lock system, uh, but it works in a different way. And it looks really good. It looks really user friendly. Um, but it's kind of cool because of the fact that, um, well, they've beaten SRAM and Shimano to 13 speed. Um, that is if SRAM and Shimano are going to 13 speed. I mean, after all, on their mountain bike group sets with a 51 and a 52 tooth top there, they've got 510 and 520 uh, percent even uh, gear ratios on them and the gear range. It's enormous. Do you really need any more than that, honestly? I'm running a 34 tooth chain ring and I'm running the Shimano option at the moment and there's nothing I've, well, nothing I can't climb up that I'm actually physically able to climb up as well. I think that gets me up anything. So I'm not sure what advantages there would be for anyone to be able to bring a 13 speed to mountain bikes. So um, I'd love to know from you lot uh, what you think underneath. Do you think SRAM's gonna be first? Do you think Shimano's gonna be first? Do you think they won't bother? Um, I'd honestly love to know, put it down there, like how much gears and how many gears you actually need on your bike. It's something I've been thinking about for a while. Now, next time you go out for a ride, try and take note of the amount of gears you use. I'm fairly sure, other than those super steep patches, or unless you're lucky enough to have some really steep terrain where you get some good speed down, you'll probably settle on around seven gears. That's what I reckon. That's what I've been kind of counting on rides of late. So I'd love to know how many gears you think you can get away with, and also your ratios. Uh, what size chain rings do you like in the front? Just, just for argument's sake, let's let's find out. Um, a few more shots of it buzzing by on the screen there. Um, and one last final thought with this. So they've gone to 13 speed. Yes, that seems crazy. Um, but we were saying that since nine speed, weren't we? You know, you don't need 10 speed. And 10 speed comes out, you soon forget about 9 speed and, and so forth. Does this mean we're going to end up with 13 speed? Do you know what? I kind of hope not, but I wouldn't be so surprised. 
Next up in news is the new 2021 version of that nuke proof reactor. Now this is their trail frame, but actually this is really, really capable. As far as trail bikes goes, this is almost like a lightweight enduro bike. Now I can see a lot of people still looking at this bike constantly. So it's available in two main options and then two frame materials. So carbon frames and there's also an alloy frame option and it's available for 27.5 and uh, 29 inch wheels, obviously. Now, the 29 inch wheel version has 130 mil travel, the 27 and a half has 10 mil extra travel on there. And in both orientations, there is an RS top spec model with an additional 10 mil travel up front. It tends to run 130 and 140 or 140, 150. The RS model has an additional 10 to make it like, you know, a real bully of a bike that's just gonna smash through anything. So here's some shots of the new ones on screen. I'll tell you what they've really pushed themselves out this time. So I'm gonna leave my favorite one to last. Uh, but on screen, what you're looking at now, so there's the RS model, the factory model, the comp and the pro. Now, first up, the RS model, so it's got an extra 10 mil travel up front. Uh, it's got the red Lyric on there. That thing looks amazing. I love the color of this. This looks really quite classy. Um, I definitely think these guys are on a run at the moment. They're making some really nice bikes. It looks like it's almost a chrome decal there on that down tube. It looks really, really cool. Uh, it's got the Sam Hill Mavic D-Max Pro wheels on there, and SRAM Eagle as well, so the 1052 gearing range. I mean, that, that's a hell of a bike. Next up, that factory model. So this one, well, this is Blake's color, isn't it? Obviously, it's the green. I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he's already put his order in for one of these. Uh, so this is uh, 10 mil less travel, or uh, so it's on the 29, you're talking about 130, 140, and 140, 150, depending on which orientation you went for. Uh, Fox 36 on the front and a DPX2 shock on the back. Interestingly, they've gone for a bike yoke seat post on these. So have a little look closer here. You can see the bike yoke seat post. The cool thing about this, it has a self-bleeding port. So if you ever manage to get air trapped in a post and it gets a little bouncy bit at the top of the stroke, you can bleed it out with no tools. Well, I think you need a four mil anarchy, but um, the point is you don't need any additional tools in order to do it. It doesn't need a service. So that is super cool. And I love the fact that new proof are like hand picking things now. I think they've always wanted to do this, but now they're finally at the stage where they're able to do this on the bikes. Now there's also the comp and the pro which are in alloy. So I think I'm right in saying the comp last year was actually carbon and the spec wasn't quite as good. But I think a lot of the reports from consumers where they wanted to have an alloy frame and have a better spec on there. And my favorite one, I've got to show you now, the ST model. So this is a short travel version of the bike. All right, so arguably it's a short travel model anyway, but what they've done with this one is they've taken it down, it's 29 only, down to 125 on the rear, and it's got, uh, hasn't got a piggyback shock on there, and down to 130 on the front. So this thing is slammed, uh, designed to be super fast on the trail, and it comes in this, well, I think it's amazing, the purple color. I've been corrected on this. Someone else said they didn't like it at all, but uh, I think it looks really cool. And actually, I've got my eyes on that one because I've also got a Fox 36 and a DPX2 that I could also chop and change on there. So I could bump up the travel or have it as a short travel ripper. But I actually quite fancy the short travel aspect of it because it's a really stout, stiff frame with lots of good stuff going on on there. Uh, some more shots firing by, as you can see on screen. Uh, what else do you need to know? Uh, you've got the flip chip in there for adjusting geometry, so you can do the trail or the rail settings. Um, really, most people would just slam that straight into the rail setting there to keep things nice and low. Uh, obviously, it makes it slightly slacker in that setting. Um, and also, a couple of cool extra things that are brand new for 2021 are they're doing size specific handlebar widths and dropper post heights, which is cool. So I think the smalls and the mediums have 780 bars and the larges and the extra larges have 800 mil bars. And depending if you have a Rock Sharks or whatever brand seat post on there, some of them got bike yoke, there's anything up to 200 mil drop on the extra large bikes and anything down to 125 on the smallest bikes. So that's really cool. They're really paying attention to rider size and spec there. Uh, super cool. Some more shots flying by right now. Bravo guys. Okay, next up is actually just a tool from Park, and I just wanted to show you because I think this is really cool. Um, it's a dummy, a dummy fork, basically. So why would you need one of these? Well, a lot of mechanics out there will be going, yeah, I've got one of these, I've made one of these at home, but the fact is you don't need to because you can get one of these. So it's, it represents um, what you'd put in a bike if you're taking a fork off to service it and you don't want to sort of lose all the bits. So you would simply slide this up inside your steerer tube. This is an inch and an eighth straight steerer tube. It already has a staff angled nut as part of that. It has a rubber bung at the bottom, so that would also fit tapered. So it'll fit regular straight steerer tube bikes or the tapered options. And then on the bottom, which is really cool, you've got threads here, you've got 
various different things. So you can mount your brake caliper on there. You've even got a pad spacer. So that means all the stuff's not gonna get lost when you take your fork off to do your, uh, your 50 hour service or whatever you wanna do with it. It's just a really cool thing for bike shops. But something that this is drawing attention to is the fact that I know that there's loads of mechanics out there and other people have tinkering with their bikes. They'll be looking at this and going, well, I've kind of got one of those, but bear in mind that not everyone's got access to an old set of forks that they can cut up and make one of these. So that's why this is so useful and obviously cheap. But I'd love to know what homemade tools all of you have made out there. Anything goes, please send them in to our top mod section because I think we can do something quite cool with this and we can sort of show people how to make homemade tools. I reckon there's a really cool video in there. Now I know that someone I know has got something along the same lines as this with an old top crown from a set of downhill forks that were broken. So that's a really good use of an old set of forks for that. But what else have you got? What have you made out there? Uh, let us know in those comments and more importantly, send them to us on our uploader. So the link is at the bottom of the screen here and in the comments underneath, there's gonna be a link you can click on, uh, go straight through to the top mods thing and show us your tools. Anything you've made, I would love to see it. And not just tools, anything else like a work stand or anything that you've used to sort of uh, make it working on your bike easier, whether it's at home or away. Uh, let us know and we'll pick it up soon. Okay, next up, I just want to point you towards some of the new bikes from Intense. Now, they actually unveiled their 2021 range. I think it was uh, beginning of last week, so we're not super up to date on this, but they're so good. Um, I just want you to see them because there's a couple of particular models in the range that I think are really pushing that brand on a bit. They've obviously got their phenomenal downhill pedigree as a brand, but also it's what they're doing with their XC-related bikes. So on screen right now, you're looking at the Sniper. So it's a 100mm travel cross-country race bike. Super lightweight, it uses a JS tuned suspension system, which is essentially Intense's version of a VPP system. We'll talk about that shortly. But they've also got the Sniper T, so it's a trail version of that same bike with 120 millimeters of travel front and rear. Now this thing really does look like a weapon to me. And it kind of just sits on the site quietly, unassumingly, but look at the thing. Look how fast this thing looks. It's 29 inch wheel, it's available in four sizes, uh, 120 travel front and rear. Reach from the small all the way through to XL is 421 up to 490. So that's actually quite aggressive for an XC style bike to be that lengthy in the front end there. 66 and a half degree head angle on it. Now that's fun, isn't it? And a 73 degree seat angle. This thing is fun all over. And if it's an intense cross-country trail bike, that thing is probably gonna be as quick as other brands bikes with a little bit more travel. If nothing else, just from the placebo effect of riding something that's so badass. Uh, intense have always had that thing. Now, the other one I wanna talk about, uh, as you can see on the screen now, is the Primer. Now, it was the Primer I referenced, I think, a couple of shows back with a post from Jeff Steber, he's Mr. Intense, uh, from his personal Instagram page where he was liking it to a Ferrari, I, I forget the model now, but. Uh, uh, this is the bike on screen now. So it's available in 29 and 27 and a half inch bikes and it's in their trail bike category. But this bike I reckon is, I reckon it's near enough enduro race ready. I reckon it would be absolutely prime for it, especially in the 29 inch one. So it uses the JS linkage on it. So the JS link is Jeff Steber's basically interpretation of where the VPP linkage would be now. So the VPP was actually designed by Outland Bikes and I think it was in about 1996, uh, Santa Cruz actually decided to buy the rights to use that exclusively. But then they teamed up with Jeff Steber of Intense Bikes uh, to basically co-develop it with them. And this was brilliant because they were basically getting the collaboration of two amazing brands, both with a serious race pedigree behind them to basically get the most out of it. Uh, and obviously things have moved on since then and over the years, Jeff has refined his and he's now got his own interpretation of it called the JS Tuned Link. Anyhow, enough of that. So the bike, uh, so the 275 is available in three sizes, the 290 is in four sizes. The only difference is the 290 has an XL. You don't get that in the 275. Uh, reach on the bikes ranges from 420 on the 275 up to 475, and the additional XL is 505. Uh, so that is like bang up to date with modern geometry there. In fact, that's definitely on the roomy side. You've seen a lot of people still wearing 490, 495 sort of thing. So uh, 505, that's a really good length. If you look at, if you're a tall guy, uh, if you're over six foot and you're looking for something fast, that could be up your street. Now it's got flip chip on there for adjusting the head angle, the BB height and stuff like that. So uh, adjust the head angle by about half a degree, adjust BB height by seven mil, but interestingly, which is something that people don't talk about much, 
including myself, is it reduces the reach slightly. And of course, when you slam a bike down like this, you're actually changing the reach, which is the measurement effectively from the uh, center of the bottom bracket axle to the bars, measures up vertically and across. Um, as you make a bike slacker, it gets slightly shorter because of where your feet are on the bike in relation to your hands. So that is something to take into account if trying to rake your bike out. Um, but cool that they say that. So Sean's are reached by six mil, 75 degree seat angle on there, uh, virtually the same on the 27 and a half. I think it might be like 0 0.1 different. Uh, 440 chain stays and 432 chain stays, uh, depending if you're going for the 290 or the 275 option. I'll tell you what, that is a really good looking bike. And it's also coil shock or air friendly. So there's so much you can do with that bike. Personally, on one of those, I reckon coil shock on the rear, air, air fork on the front, like a 36 or something like that. Um, and just let that thing rip in a 29. I think that is gonna be a seriously fast, uh, I reckon an underestimated bike as well. Um, but yeah, mega nice to see. Uh, what do you think of intense bikes? Do they go under your radar? Are they in your face because of the paint jobs? Uh, let us know in the discussion. Or couldn't you care less? Whatever it is, let us know down there. Okay, last bit of news actually is just, I just want to say a little thank you to Muckle for uh, helping keep us all safe here at GMBN, EMBN, GMBN Tech. Um, obviously we work with them with bike, bike cleaner products and stuff, but they're providing us all individually with loads of the hand sanitizer and antibacterial equipment wipes. Now this is gold for us because uh, we're having to work in a very specific way when we do go back to using the sets. We're still working on our own. You have to walk in the building in a certain manner, uh, leave the building through a different exit, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I'm just really happy that we've been looked after. And also just wanted to say big ups to, to Muckoff actually, because they're actually donating 10% of the profit to this, to the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Unit, uh, which is part of the World Health Organization. I just think that's really cool. Uh, so nice one, Markov. Thank you for keeping us safe. Okay, now it's time for the quiz. So I'm gonna ask you three mountain bike tech related questions. And hopefully without looking on your computers or on your devices, you're gonna give me the answers. Okay, so first question coming up on screen. Which of the following companies makes bike lights? Speed defies gravity? Ultimate Sports Engineering, or Full Speed Ahead? Hmm, what could it be? Next question. Which automotive tire manufacturer, beginning with P, now makes mountain bike tires? Any ideas on that one? Okay, next question is, which fluid type do TRP use in their hydraulic brakes? Do they use DOT or do they use mineral? Okay, now it's time for top mods. This is all about the modifications that you make to your bikes or we make to our bikes and we show them to you, whatever. So if you've made anything cool on your bike or you've changed things, swapped your grips around, put some air volume spaces in your suspension, even built a complete bike, anything you've done at all to improve your bike for you, we want to know about it. If you've done anything at all, anything counts, however small, there's a link right there and there's another one underneath this video and you can click on it. It uh, takes you through to our uploader service. Uh, inundate us with your modifications because we love seeing this stuff. Now first up, I'm gonna hit you with an amazing one. So this one is from Mark in Lincolnshire. Uh, now have a look at this first picture. I think I've actually seen this over on the dirt shed before. So I've got no fingers on my left hand. And then until last year, I only used my rear brake on the right. Um, so I'm guess using it with your thumb, which just sounds so hard to use, but uh, um, I flipped it so I could push it with my hand. Okay, so not a thumb. This worked okay, but not great, taking a hand off the bars when it was rough. No, of course, no. Now, after re-watching your videos with Tom Wheeler, um, oh, just before he goes on, if you haven't seen the Tom Wheeler documentary, I urge you, you really must watch this. This is absolutely incredible. There's gonna be a link to it floating up on the screen after this, and there's another link under there. Check it out, it's well worth a bit of your time. You'll be amazed at what Tom can do, and of course, how he inspires other riders as well, like Mark. So, after re-watching your videos with Tom Wheeler, I then moved both levers onto the right-hand side. So after 30 years, I finally had the use of both brakes, which took a bit of getting used to. Being mostly a roadie, I've really gotten into mountain biking whilst in lockdown. So I upgraded my cheap hardtail to a cross-soil uh, cross suspension bike. 
I've since upgraded the, the brake to a Hope Duo lever, which is by far the best solution I've ever found. Yeah, uh, that what Hope are making is incredible. I actually showed this to, to Tom after, literally just after he filmed it. I think it came out. Uh, what a product, but massive kudos to you for trying this out because I can't think what sort of muscle memory you would need to do this. So I've, I've tried out Tom's bike and it, oh, it totally works, but you'd have to just completely recalibrate how you ride. Uh, I'm in awe of anyone that needs to and attempts to ride like this. I think it's just so cool. And honestly, I can't say it enough. Anyone that hasn't seen it, you really must see the Tom Wheeler documentary to find out more about this sort of stuff. You'll be blown away. But um, awesome, so cool to see, Mark. Um, I'm so glad that, you know, something you've seen and someone like Tom has actually just made you think a bit differently about stuff because I can't imagine how dangerous it was having to take your hand off to actually sort of use the heel of your hand or however you were braking before. Obviously it makes sense in it to use like your other hand, but um, really cool to see. And of course there's that hope lever there. Uh, what a great solution. Just, it must be so easy ergonomically to use compared to running the two different levers set up. I think it's amazing. It looks super trick. Um, dude, I'm absolutely stoked. I'd love to see some of you riding at whatever level you are. I just think it's so cool that you're out riding a bike. Uh, this is exactly what GMBN Tech should be covering. I think this is amazing. So thank you so much for taking the time to send us the images. And I just want to show you one more cool top mod uh, this week. This one's from Jonathan in uh, Wellington, New Zealand, all the way to the other side of the world. It's my very customized 2019 Giant Rain 2. I got it at the beginning of 2019 and over time I've changed all of the parts except for the rear axle, stem spacers, dropper and a saddle. I contemplated getting an entirely new bike, but I like the geometry and the size of the frame, so I decided to just build it with all my dream parts. Dude, that is exactly what anyone should be doing with their bikes. You buy a bike that really likes it, yes, you can spend the time and money preserving a frame by maybe putting a Vizi frame kit or something on it to keep it looking good, and then just upgrade all the stuff on it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think it's awesome. And also, I even love the fact you said, I'm 15, I paid for everything myself, including the original uh, purchase of bike. Um, brilliant. Top, absolutely top job. Uh, really cool, I mean, I think your bike looks really good as well, by the way. Um, I love the tan walls, I love the Renthal cockpit on there. Uh, one of my friends works for Renthal, actually. Used to work with him many, many years ago. Uh, great looking setup, those Fox 36s, isn't it? Yeah, dude, you've done a great job on it. And so cool, so rewarding that you've saved up every penny and done that yourself. How cool is that? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd happily be gifted a bike as well, but there's nothing like spending a bit of time really saving up for, for something that you can work on. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, I lied, I said there was, um, I, that was the last one, but there is one more, I thought I was mistaken. So this one's from Thomas at Black Rock in Oregon. All he's done is put some new grips, pedals, tires, and a drop post on, and some frame protection. But the reason I put it on, um, not only is it a transition, it's a very cool bike and very cool pictures, but check that mud guard on the front. What brand is that? It's absolutely enormous, and yet somehow, at a glance, it blends in really well. That looks cool, I wanna know more about that. I mean, uh, I've got quite a few. I've got one of the, the Cryd XLs, I've got, um, we've got some custom RRP ones, these are all great, but I'm always interested to find out more. Look at the length of that thing. I bet that thing is amazing in the filth. Um, so definitely let us know in those comments if you're watching this. And uh, your bike looks great, by the way. I love the col color coordination on there. Looks really good. Nice pictures too, by the way. But uh, thank you, that's enough for this week. Uh, get your entries in for next time. We'll put you on the show. <laughs> Okay, now it's time for Bike Cave. Um, what is a Bike Cave? Well, this is a Bike Cave. This is my Bike Cave. I built this Bike Cave and it's got my bikes in it. Um, so we'd like to see your Bike Caves and your bikes in it. It could be under the stairs, it could be the back of the van, it could be a shipping container sunk in the lawn. There's a dream and there's an idea. Uh, it literally could be anything, anything goes. And it could be the tiniest little space in your student digs or it could be a massive luxury place. Whatever it is, come on, give us some inspiration. Uh, think of this as like your little grand designs moment on the little GMBN Tech Show. But, uh, come on, let us have them. Uh, film them if possible. We'd love to see little video walkthroughs. Uh, don't use any music if you can help it though, because we'd like to hear what you're saying and be able to use it without uh, getting the rights police after us. Uh, there's a link right there and there's another one underneath in the description underneath this. 
Now check this one out, here is a good one for inspiration. Even the most modest garage can be an amazing bike cave. So this one is from Allen in East Devon. In fact, you might end up only getting the time to go through this one because it's so extensive. So it started off as basically a garage with a nice looking roll cab down the back and a washing machine for washing your bike stuff and a very cool Makita sight radio as well. And obviously a Makita drill, bit of a Makita fan, I've got to say. Uh, was one of the rare households that used a garage for the car. I had a small workbench in the back of the dark and dirty garage to work on my bikes, but my kind wife agreed at the cost of another child to turn it into a bike cave. Yeah, okay, I know plenty of people that have been in your situation do anything for a bike cave. Yeah, all right, what's it gonna be? Very good. Okay, so now look at it, flipping heck, dude. It's insane, it's like a bike shop. That is unreal. What a transformation. Plain old garage, boom, bike shop. Awesome. Obviously in your skating as well. So you've got skateboards on the right hand side as you go in. Uh, it's got a little kid's quad down the back by the looks of it. Is that radiators down there on the back wall? Is that some sort of, I'm hoping it's radiators to keep your garage nice and warm. Or maybe it's to hang up your riding clothes after they've come out of the washing machine. Uh, either way, it looks really cool. We'll love the sterling board across the back. Big fan of that. Um, really tidy looking homemade workbench system, even big enough for spare tires. Love seeing some decent DIY. Mate, you've even done, I think you've done a ceiling as well, haven't you? Yeah, you've even boarded that out. It looks phenomenal. So I'd love to know how, how long you uh, you spent doing it, uh, but you're right, it does need a sofa and it does need a beer fridge. Um, I haven't got a sofa and a beer fridge in mine, but my beer fridge is literally behind with the camera, so it kind of doesn't matter. Um, but dude, it looks amazing. I guess you know, you've got a muck off jet wash hidden in there as well. Good use of the, uh, the muck off mat to keep your workbench clean. That's a really good hack, actually. Smart idea. I've just got one of these park rubber bench top mats to do something similar, um, but that's a really good hack. Nice one. I might have to um, rip that one off and tell people that was my idea. Nice one, Alan. Um, and then, of course, you built like a wardrobe style unit for your riding shoes in there as well. And yeah, well, you've got your bikes down the back. Nice, got an airdrop and a Scott hanging up there. Awesome, dude. A couple of great little kids' bikes, too. Really cool to see. It looks like you might be into your climbing as well. And um, maybe you could have a little climbing wall in there. Over the ceiling perhaps, a bit of strength training indoors, strength and grip, your dynamic moves. Um, super cool. Okay, and um, we're gonna have a quick look at this one as well. This one's from Ben in Lake Utah, very nice. Just finished setting up the bike cave stroke hangout zone in my new house. Perfect space to fix bikes and watch a bit of GMBN tech. Mate, it looks awesome. That sofa looks comfy as, You've got some toys as well, haven't you? You've got snowboards, skateboards. Mate, it looks nice. Good artwork going on there as well. Nice to see, you know, part tools there as well. Your little organizer, very nice. Wheel jig too, serious mechanic. Can always tell if the mechanic's serious if they've got wheel jig. Yeah, and husky as well, nice. Oh, look at this, I love this stuff. Oh, and one last one, come on, let's have another one while we're on a roll. Uh, this one's from Adam in Pennsylvania, um, and his bikes, got a selection of bikes and a half. 2020 Nine R Rip 9 RDO, 2019 Commercial Supreme DH29, 2020 YT Decoy, dude, how much money have you got? Fair play, uh, Pennsylvania. Just moved into my new place and decided to build my shop correctly this time around. I'm always working on bikes, even if they're mine, my kids, or my friends. And there you go, that's the attitude, good work. Um, the kids help me build a rack just for their bikes so they have easy access. Dude, that's amazing. Uh, laptop in my toolbox for tech help, TV on the wall for entertainment. I even stashed the air compressor in the rafters for convenience. Now that's a cool hack. Yes, well into that. Looking great, a couple of those park bench top mats there. Good sturdy workbench. Yep, all good. Nice backboard there. You've got all the spanners in the world by the looks of it there. Yeah, looking good. There you go, there's the workbench there, tool chest. There's a top open so you can see your laptop in there. Nice, <laughs> I love that little can of Coke holder thing. <laughs> That's rad. Yeah, nice. Oh, good, and you got wardrobe in there as well. Oh man, you got everything going on. Got one of those Patagonia bags as well, very nice. I like my Patagonia stuff too, good brand. Now you've got a TV on the wall. Oh, I can see myself and the late Henry there as well with us. Looking good. Wonder if Henry's tuned in. He's probably not, he's probably tuned out. Basically on holiday already. Good on him. Looking good, you've got your Fox 36 in the work stand there. You installing that? It looks like it's got a fresh steerer tube on it. Can't tell. I'd guess you might be installing it because it looks brand new. Or is it a 38? No, it's, that's a 38, isn't it? Nice. Nice work. 
Yeah, there's your wardrobe. I'm very envious of your proper wardrobe. I kind of butchered mine together a bit, but that looks good, got a bit more space. I reckon I could have a reshuffle in here and figure, yeah, there's an idea. Ah, oh, nicely done. And there's your kid's bike storage as well. Dude, that is so cool. I love the fact that they wanted to be part of making that, so they had the ideal place to store their bikes. Uh, that is so cool. Uh, that's all we've got time for this week. Unfortunately, we've not got time. I've been chin wagging too long for a rewind, so we'll have to do rewind bumper issue next time. Okay, and just before we clock off, we better give you the quiz answers, haven't we? Okay, so the first one was um, which company make bike lights out of them? Any answer? Yep, it's USE, Ultimate Sports Engineering. Uh, one of their brands that they manufacture here in the UK is Exposure Lights, which are, oh, if I reach over here, I've got a few of these around. We're doing a video with lights soon. Um, really cool lights, and I made a really cool video. I went to see them to see how they make their lights. Super impressive, to be honest, and uh, the warranty and that they offer on these, pretty much. We bought one of these, you've got one of these for life. I think that's really cool and worth knowing about. Next up was the Automotive Tire Company, beginning with P. Did you get that one? Pirelli, that's right, they make the Scorpion range of tyres. Um, interestingly named range of mountain bike tyres, apparently they're very good, they do lots of things, although Scorpion, I always thought, was something you did when you got something wrong on a bike, but uh, hey-ho. And next up was what uh, oil do TRP use in their brakes? Did you get it? No, it wasn't dot, it was mineral fluid, that's right. And neither of those fluids is any better. Uh, DOT, in case you're wondering, stands for Department of Transportation. It's a regulated oil. Um, basically, it means that they make an oil to a very high spec and uh, it has to deal with boiling temperatures. It has to be very predictable for use in automotive industry. Whereas mineral oil isn't regulated. But actually, that is to the advantage of many manufacturers that choose to develop brakes around mineral oil because they can develop their own oil to work perfectly with their brakes. And that's what TRP have done with their excellent brakes. Right, well, uh, hopefully you got on quite well there, did you? Did you get the answers right? Did you get them wrong? Let us know. Let us know underneath in those comments. Oh, well, there we go. We're out of time. That is the end of this week's GMBN Tech Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, don't forget to let us know what you think in the comments underneath. Also, I'm about to rebuild the show. We're gonna put a load of new features in. We're gonna structure things a bit differently. Don't worry, there's still gonna be tech news going on in the show, and we're gonna still feature some of your favorites as well. But I'd love to know what other features would you like to see in the show? Let us know underneath with the hashtag um, coming next and we'll, uh, we'll pick it up soon. See you later.